Cinema is built upon illusions. Sets recreate reality. Editing manipulates time, whilst visual effects do the impossible. But the first and most fundamental illusion is motion. In my upcoming videos, I'll be talking about camera lenses, camera movement, and best gear for filmmaking. Kindly hit on the sub button. Let's do this together. In this episode, we are going to focus on how different frame rates impact how we perceive motion and the speed at which motion appears on a screen. Pictures are based on an optical illusion. Just another case where seeing is believing. Despite the name frame rate, when we watch a film, we are not seeing motion pictures. What we see are multiple pictures, a series of still images. Playing back these images or frame continuously is what creates the perception of emotion. There are a couple of theories on how this works, but the short answer is when images are shown fast enough, our brain loses the ability to see individual frame rates and blends them together into a single image. Now, the number of individual frames that are shown within one second is known as frame rate. Frame rate is expressed in frames per second or FPS. For example, a frame rate of 24 FPS contains 24 individual frames or still photos within one second. To shoot a narrative that emulates the look of traditional um, cinema, you would want to shoot at a frame rate of 24 FPS. Let's go back a little bit into the history of frame rate and sound. When sound was introduced first to motion pictures, the frame rate needed to be fast enough to utilize sound technology, but slow enough to save money on the amount of film being shot. The consistent use of 24 frames per second over the years in big movies has dubbed it the most cinematic frame rate. However, we've seen some noticeable exceptions over the last um, few years. The Hobbit was famously shot at 48 frames per second. The goal was to reduce motion blur and the eye strain of 3D presentation. Director Peter Jackson wanted to create a completely immersive audience experience. A hundred years ago, you know, movies were black and white, they were silent, they were 16 frames a second, okay? And so a hundred years from now, what are they going to be? I think you can absolutely guarantee they're not going to be 24 frames a second. So at what point between now and a hundred years do these advances actually happen? Director Ang Lee took this idea a step further when he decided to shoot Gemini Man at a whooping 120 frames per second. There's a vision more closer to life. The experience is different. The perspective is different. Uh, you got a first person feeling, what would that be like? To me, it's a logical next step. However, since this video is presented as 24 FPS, these clips you are seeing don't represent the look of a higher frame rate. So to get the full experience, you need to see it projected at an equal frame rate. If you think shooting at 24 frames per second isn't going to be a thing anymore in years to come, let me know in the comment section below and why. Now, the additional frame rate in higher frame rate makes motion looks smoother. But what about when cinematographers deviate from realistic speed to tell their stories? Assuming you will be playing back at 24 frames per second, then you should know that lower frame rates are going to make your video look choppy because they lack frame rate. The question is, why would anybody do this? Let me tell you one reason why. Recreating a vintage look of old home movies. Now let's look at another reason filmmakers shoot at lower frame rates. This technique is called step printing. This is done by shooting at lower frame rates, often with a slower shutter speed to create um, the blurring and streaking. Then the frames are copied and repeated to create 24 frames per second. For example, 
In Tony Scott Dynamo, they shot the sequences at 6 frames per second and printed each frame an additional 4 times to equal 24 frames per second. You can also find this effect in Gladiator and certain music videos. The physical motion is at normal speed, but the amount of motion blur gives the impression of fast motion, ideal to create a subjective presentation. You can check out my video on shutter speed to get a vivid idea on the relationship between frame rate and shutter speed. I've left link in the description below you can follow after this video. Now let's look at the opposite effect. If we want to slow down the motion of something that goes fast, we speed up our camera and make, say, five times as many pictures per second. We have slow motion when they are shown on the screen at normal camera speed. Assuming you will be playing back at 24 frames per second to create a slow motion effect, you will need to shoot at a frame rate higher than the playback rate. It could be 48, 60, or 120, which is called overcranking. The higher the frame rate, the slower you can slow down the footage while maintaining smooth motion and clarity. For the metrics, shots were taken at speed up to 300 frames per second. You're empty. So are you. The opening credits of Zombie Land were shot at a whooping thousand frames per second. The key thing to remember about slow motion is that it emphasizes whatever action or emotions you present with it. It can make horror more terrifying, actions more spectacular, or comedy more hilarious. Filmmakers utilize this extremely high frame rates to capture movements that even a human eye cannot see. In this scene from the Hat Locker, extreme slow motion is used to brilliantly capture an explosion. High frame rate also enables filmmakers to utilize speed ramps like in this iconic action sequence from Zack Snyder's 300. A speed ramp is an editing technique used to transition between variant speeds of motion in same shots, where each strike is given extra weight and impact. To better understand the impact of slow motion on a story, take a look at these two fight scenes. One is at normal speed, while the other is in slow motion. Creed ready to let his hands go. Creed misses and gets hit in return. First, distract target. Then block his blind jab. Counter with cross to left cheek. Hard left hook for Conlon. Will attempt wild hailing. What does slow motion accentuate in these fightings for the audience? And what does it take away? Okay, let me end this video on some tips on how to manage frame rate. Deciding which frame rates to shoot at depends on what you want your final product to look like, which we call the quality of motion, such as normal motion, slow motion, or fast motion. However, the final frame rates we see on screen are actually the relationship of two different speeds, which we call the capture rate and the presentation rate. Capture rate is how many frames per second were recorded by the camera, whilst presentation rate is how many frames per second the audience sees in the finished film. For normal speed motion, the presentation rate must be equal to the capture rate. 
If you are shooting something with a lot of motion, let's say sports or concert, anything that has to do with entertainment, you might want to consider shooting and presenting at higher frame rate as the additional frames would make motion appear more smoother. Remember, to achieve slow motion, you would have to shoot faster than 24 fps. Only max frame rate if you intend to shoot high frames per second to create slow motion or shoot lower frames to achieve a choppy jittery effect. Always remember, no matter how many frames you shoot, it's always your presentation rate that matters. Okay, if you love this video, kindly give me a sub and hit on the bell icon to receive notifications of my newly uploaded videos. Until my next video, peace out.